morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to God's house again. We praise the name of the Lord for the opportunity to be here gathered together this morning. Let's stand for opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for gathering us together this morning in your name. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your words of truth this morning that encouraged our heart, oh God, and, and brought our mind to, the, the, to, to remembrance of the miracles of times past, of the, of the faith of our fathers, Lord, our forefathers, oh God. And we just praise you, Lord, for those miracles that you did, oh God, for your glory and for their benefit, oh Lord. And, and point us in that direction, Lord. Let us be uplifted by that. Let us, our faith be encouraged this morning Let us, as we worship together in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. May we see. All right. Well, turn over if you would. 648, 648 in your hymnal. We see, we see that we see that as long as sin was not in the camp, the Israelites were victorious all the time. And we can have victory all the time this morning. Good to have Matthew's family back with us. <laughs> Six. say, well, I can't have victory if I have sin in my life. How do I get the sin out of my life? The Lord. Only the Lord can remove sin from our life. Praise God. 412, 412, he brought us out. He brought us out. He brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. And then he brought them out of the wilderness into the Canaan land. He can bring you out of sin this morning. If you're still trapped in that wilderness, 412, he brought me out.
We thank him for what he's doing this morning. If you're not convinced that the Lord is working in your life, if you're saying, David, David, my life fell apart. I had everything I wanted, and now it's all gone. If you're thinking that the Lord's not working in your life, think again. Because ask yourself, where you were, was it headed to heaven? Were you on your road? Were you walking with God? Were you protected by him? Were you serving him? Were you doing these things? Was your life going to end in goodness? Or was it going to end in fire and pain and terror? So, the Lord, you see, this is how the Lord works. He brings us to our lowest point, or he allows us to be brought to our lowest point. And at that point in time, we can recognize that we're not God, he is, and then we can seek him and his face. And, and I praise him for the, name, for the time that he brought me to my lowest point and brought me to this rescue mission where I was able to meet him for the first time. As a small child, I had, my mother had sent me to Sunday school. She sent me. She didn't even go. She just sent me. She said, it's over there. Church is across the street. Go. And I went like an obedient child. But, you know, I didn't meet Jesus then. You know, as a little child, I think maybe, maybe we're closer to Jesus than we are as adults, you know, before we, because we're so simple. We have such a childlike faith. And yet, and yet I didn't know Jesus personally then. I didn't meet him until I was 37 years old. And I'm 55 now. And I praise the Lord that he allowed me to live that long. <laughs> Who would have thunk it, Brother Doug, that I would have lived that long after all the stupid choices I made and the foolish risks that I took and the, and the, the edge of danger that I lived on my whole life. And yet I, I made it and I praise his name. This morning I thank him for what he did for me. Praise God. And so should you thank him for what he did for you and how he allowed you to come to this place to meet him. Praise God. Turn over to 328. If you're not this morning, I'm asking you the question, but if you're not, Make, make provision. He's made provision for you. 328, are you washed in his blood this morning? And if, if you're not, you can be. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise his name. 328, are you...
morning for those that are washed in the blood of the Lamb. I, my Bible tells me that underneath the throne of the Lamb are the ones that have been washed in His blood. Praise God. They've been wearing robes, white robes. Praise the Lord because they've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. They've been made pure, cleansed within, and they're white. Praise the Lord. They're also impatient. How long, Lord? <laughs> How long, Lord, must we wait for our to be avenged of the blood of our enemies. And what did the Lord say? He said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He said, wait. He said, wait. Wait. Praise the Lord. But if you're waiting this morning because you're happy with sin, don't wait any longer because there's no, the time is short. Time is very short. And you say, well, well, you've been saying that for a long time. Ben, how many years has it been since the Lord was crucified and raised up? Almost 2,000, right? Praise the Lord. How many, how many years since the creation of the world? Six, almost 6,000. 50, 50, 58, 94 or something. I don't know exactly. Maybe, maybe Danny could help me with that. But, but certainly almost 6,000 years. Almost 6,000 years. And, you know, we're not, we don't know the day nor the hour. We know the seasons, though. And, and, and I believe that if the Lord has got a 1,000-year reign on earth, and that represents the Sabbath... When the 6,000 number comes rolling around, it's time. It's time. So it's, it's getting close. Maybe not in our lifetime, but maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Could be. Everybody thinks it's in our lifetime, you know, and, and maybe it is. I think it'll be in my lifetime. And, uh, and I've got, what, 55, 15 years left? I've got 15 years left according to the book, but not, not promised. No man is promised tomorrow. The days of man are three score and ten, and yet that's really the maximum limit. Eighty by reason of strength. Yeah. Yeah, been some improvements in, uh, in health care and hygiene and, and modern medicine. So we don't, we don't really know. But the thing is, we don't really know. But we do know that as a tree falleth, so shall it lie. We have to be ready. Whenever that time is, we don't know when our time is. It doesn't matter when Jesus is coming back. What matters is when, when we die. But even that, he could come back before we die. The point is to be ready. We don't know. We don't know. Would you gamble everything? Would you gamble everything? Would you gamble everything on not knowing? Your soul, what, 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 what would a man give in exchange for his soul? What would he give? Your soul is the most important possession we have, praise the Lord. The most important thing that we have. Far more important than anything that we have. Life, food, health, family. Oh, nothing could be more important than my baby girl. It is. Our soul is more important than everything. We can't pray for anybody unless we're right with God. What would you give? What would you give? What have you given? What, what have you given? And yet, yet there's time, praise God. There's time right now, you understand, right now. When you hear the words of the Lord spoken by this man of the cloth right here, you, you have the opportunity to open your heart to that and receive that truth. You see, you can, you can reject it, you, you see. You can, you can white-knuckle it. You can reject it. You can walk away. You can, you can be distracted and leave. You can be, be listen to those voices in your head, you see, but, but, or you can receive the word, you see. And then if you receive that word, if you open your heart to that word, and if you embrace that word, then the Spirit can work within you, you see. You see. So it's your choice this morning how you, how you receive the word of God as brought to us by this man of the cloth, you see. Okay? I encourage you to be honest with yourself. You see, we, we don't, if, if, we, if we're in denial, right? If we're in denial, no, not me. Hey, it's not my, my I'm not the reason I'm here. I'm not the problem. My whole life, I thought everybody else was the problem. Ah, I was deceived, you see. Satan had blinded me, you see. They're the problem. They're the problem. But I was the problem. And I'm glad that the Lord brought me to that place. Praise God. If he's brought you to that place this morning, if you understand that you're your biggest problem, of course, Satan is your, all of our biggest problem, right? But we become our biggest problem. And if you're to that place, only the Lord can help you. I can't help you. I can pray for you, I can pray with you, but I can't help you. I couldn't help myself. But the Lord, you see, Jesus is the answer. Who believes Jesus is the answer this morning? Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I think even those of us that have not yet come to the place where we're fully submitted to Christ believe that he can help us. We believe it. Maybe we just think we're not ready. Maybe the enemy of your soul, the devil, is saying, just wait. It's okay if you do it. Just wait. Do it later. Do it later. What later? What later? Does later come? Maybe. Maybe not. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to pray this morning for Brother Jerome. 
We need to pray for ourselves, one for another, that the Lord would open our hearts and let us be the ones that, that he would have us to be. He doesn't want us to be who we are today. He wants us to be so much more. He came that we might have life and that more abundantly, praise God. Yes. We're not realizing our full potential this morning, you see. Yes. Yes. Unless we're fully trusting in Jesus for his will for our lives, praise the Lord. Who here would like prayer this morning? Praise who here? Praise God. All right. We heard specific prayer requests in Sunday school this morning. We're going to continue those. Any new requests? This morning, any, by way of uplifted hand, anyone with a spoken request, okay? Pray for the preacher, our country, Israel, the staff here, the affliction, the affliction and the diseases among us, certainly those, the saints, each one, the families, the families of those that are here that cannot be with their family this morning, the families. You know, God can restore that. He can't, he can't always fix what we've broken. Is anything impossible for God? No. Nothing is impossible for God, but there's some things he can't do. He can't lie. He can't sin. He can't do some other things. Uh, some things he's bound. You see, he's bound them in, a syst in an orderly system. He's created rules, all right? He's created rules, and he can't violate those rules that he's created. So if we've put ourselves in cross pattern to him, and we created a situation bound by those rules, he can't undo those rules to fix what we did. But what he can do, he can take us and start from that place and restore us to restore us and then move us forward in a positive direction. That's what he can do. And I praise his name this morning for what he can do in your life this morning and what he's done in my life. Praise God. Let's stand together and let's pray out to the almighty God, the one true God, the God of Israel, the God of Jacob, our God. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning. Oh, God, for the miracles that you've done in our lives, oh, Lord. We thank you, Lord, oh, God, for sending yourself as your son to die on an old rugged cross to take our sin, Lord, and, and free us, Lord, God. Give us salvation and freedom from sin. Oh, Lord, freedom from the penalty of sin, oh, Lord. Each one of us stand guilty before you, Lord, for what we've done in our lives, and yet, oh, God, your blood can wash us clean and has washed some clean, Lord, and, and can wash others clean this morning, Lord, God. All we have to do is trust in you, Lord, believe that you are. Believe that, oh God, you are a, a server of those that diligently seek you, Lord, with rewards of, of salvation, benefit, and blessing, oh Lord. Those that would submit to you, oh God, with their whole heart. Oh, we praise you this morning, Lord. Oh God, for what you're able to do for each one that's here. Oh, Lord, we can bind you with our unbelief. We can bind you, oh, God, with our disobedience. And yet, you would have us not do that. You would have us come to you, Lord. Oh, God, with an open heart, a yielded, submitted heart, oh, Lord. You would have us uh, pour out our trouble and uh, pour out our problems upon you. You would have us bring our burdens to you, oh, God, that you might, oh, Lord, deliver us from those burdens. We praise you this morning. Oh, Lord, there's humanity here. Oh, God, each one has a specific need. Lord, a special need. We all need our souls cleansed, oh God, so we can make it to a holy heaven with a holy God, to be with you, oh Lord, for all time. And yet we all need, Lord, the same things. We need love from you, oh God. We need forgiveness, Jesus. But we each, each one has a special a heartache, a special need deep within their secret heart of hearts, oh God. You can answer that prayer this morning. Lord, be faithful to each one according to the promises in your word. Oh Lord, as we submit to you, as we seek your face, oh Lord God, as we repent of our sins as we are obedient to you lord and we submit to your will bless each one according to your will in our lives oh lord using your power for you are the one true god and we praise you heal those among us that are afflicted oh lord touch those that need a physical touch that isn't disease related oh lord be with travelers mercies with those that have traveled to hear your word and worship you Oh, God, bind these together as one concerning the things touching you, Christ Jesus. Oh, Lord, and help us, oh, God, as we worship you this morning. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, reach out to the families of these, oh, God. The families, Lord, restore, oh, Lord, God. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Meet the needs of each heart, every uplifted hand, oh, God, every unspoken wish and request in the hearts of men and women. Lord, we know that thou art faithful and able because thou art the answer, Jesus. The name above all names, the name above all names, King of kings and Lord of lords, we praise you this morning, Jesus, in your name, we pray, amen. amen. Thank you, you, may be seated. I'd like our ushers to come this morning to raise the morning offering, it goes for the support of the rescue mission. Help us to be cheerful. Give us, Lord. Increase our 
our boundaries, yes. our desires, our territory yes. that we give on to yes. the King, Father God, never looking back, but no. looking forward, waiting on the, on the high quality, the hope of glory. That's it. The hope of glory. Amen. 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 Good. Amen. Good. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you for that offering and that offertory. That last verse reads, I belong to the king and his promise is sure that we all shall be gathered at last in his kingdom above by life's waters so pure when this life with its trials are past. I belong to the king. I'm a child of his love and he never forsaketh his own. He will call me someday to his palace above. I shall dwell by his glorified throne. Praise the name of the Lord this morning. Open your hearts as Brother Jerome brings us the word. God bless you, brother. Good morning. Uh, what a joy, what a delight to be in the house of the Lord. And I come this morning with a, with a, with a happy heart, a, a, a heart that is filled for rejoicing. And uh, I, just, I just anticipate uh, uh, the Lord's day. It, it's, it's that day where, where I get fed and... Uh, where I get to learn about myself, where I get an opportunity to look at the word and, and hear the word of God and, and allow the word of God to be my mirror. It lets me know where I am and where I need to be and where I ought to be. But more importantly than that, it gives me instructions on how to get there, how to get there. So no matter what we want to do, if we don't have the proper instructions, we're going to have pitfalls and roadblocks along the way. But the word of God shows us what to do and how to do it so we can avoid those pitfalls and those roadblocks. And, and, and I'm so grateful and thankful that, uh, that I am privileged to have the word of God in my hand and, and, and to hear the word of God. It, 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 it is truly, truly a blessing to me, and it's my, my heart's desire that the Word of God become a true blessing to each and every one of you as well. I want to, I want to give us a, uh, a base scripture this morning, and from that scripture, I want to look at various other scriptures just to expound on my base scripture. I think it's very important for us to know 
some things about God and, and, and what God wants to do for us and through us. So, so I, just, I just want us to, to focus this morning. Focus this morning. What can I receive from God? What is it that I need from God? But more importantly, how can I be used by God? We're all here for a reason and for a purpose. And we can only get those answers from God. I can't tell you what God's purpose is for you. I can't tell you what God has for you in your life. But I can tell you, God wants to know you. God wants to know you. So for our base scripture this morning, grab your Bibles and turn to Philippians. The book of Philippians, chapter 1. The book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 6. When you're there, say amen. Amen. Oh, I need to wait a couple more moments. The book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that ye which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. What a verse. What a verse. Powerful verse. Being confident. Being confident in this very thing. And that very thing is in God Almighty. Being confident in God Almighty. (laughs) That he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it. Until the day of Jesus Christ. And what does that mean? That God. That God will continue to work. On you. In you. And through you. Until. Until. Jesus comes again. That lets me know there's not a moment in my life. Where I can't be without Jesus. He's there every moment of your life until Jesus comes again. What an awesome promise. No separation, no loneliness, no distress, no isolation. You're not a castaway. You're in the hands of the almighty God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Blessed Father, we ask you one more time, Lord, just to come, Lord. Visit us, Lord, one more time, Lord. We're just asking that you shower your love upon us today, Lord. Allow thy spirit, Lord, to fall upon us, Lord. We're just asking that your blessed will be done. And for all that you do this morning, we give thee the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Regardless, regardless of how you feel, no matter what your circumstance may be this morning, whether you're 19 or 99, Your best days are not behind you. With God, your greatest days are still ahead of you. That is what makes serving God so wonderful, so exciting, because there's always something new. There's always something better. And I say, if you will let it, Every day will be more exciting than the day before. It is nothing that I'm doing. It is nothing that 
you can do, but it is everything that God will do for you. And as Brother Dave said earlier, we haven't reached or scratched the surface of our potential. We haven't even scratched the surface of our potential. It is through that that God wants to form us and to, and to shape us into someone that can know him and to love him and to serve him. The moment that we become a child of God, the work in progress begins. You might say, Brother Jerome, you don't know my situation. You don't know my circumstance. God knows it. And I do know this. God is bigger than your circumstance. God is bigger than your situation. God is bigger than you. My Bible teaches me all things are possible. <laughs> All things are possible. So your situation, your circumstance doesn't stand a chance with God. Doesn't stand a chance. Regardless of how you're feeling this morning. There is not enough negativity there is not enough evilness in this world that could stop God from fulfilling that promise, that plan, that purpose that he has for your life. Nothing. Nothing can stop that. That is settled. And I'm going to take you to to Romans 8, 37 through 39. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Based on that passage of scripture, nothing can separate us from the love of God, but us. I'm the only one can separate me from God. You're the only one that can separate yourself from God. There's nothing created nor anything in heaven can separate you from the love of God. Hallelujah. What a promise. That is something you can stand on till your death. Amen. That God will always, always shower you with his love. Who on this earth can you claim to always love you? Not a one. Oh, we can mouth it. We can mouth it easily. Because when we mouth it, we get some in return. Oh, but the promises of God. The promises of God are eternal. Nothing on earth can tarnish the promises of God. Nothing on earth can tarnish anything concerning God. Because the things of God is not of this earth. Praise God. Heavenly things. Incorruptible things. Things that are nobler. Things that are pure. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God wants to do a work. And he's faithful to complete that work. Amen. 
There is nothing that can come between us and the love of God. No matter what we can come against, God, through his son Jesus Christ, and his love for us, has already made us more than conquerors. God has not brought us this far to allow the enemy of our soul to throw us under the bus. Nor ever. Nor ever. God has too much invested in me. God has too much invested in you. He knows better than anyone in your life. The best is yet to come. And that the greatest things in your life are still in the making. That is, that is so wonderful to know that every day that God gives us, that's a day. That's the day for grooming. That's the day for growth. Yes. That is the day of drawing closer, getting deeper in the love of God. And as I spoke about in Bible study last night, understanding and realizing the fullness of God's grace. God's grace encompasses all of his attributes, encompasses everything that God has ordained for your life. When we think about the grace of God, we only see it as God giving us another day. And that's wonderful, that's powerful, but it's much more than that God granting us another day. God's fullness is what he wants us to understand and to embrace. The fullness of all his graces, the love he has for us, the mercy that he has for us, the joy that he wants us to have, the happiness. God wants so much more for us. He has invested his only son in us and for us. Without Jesus, without Jesus, you can possibly enjoy the fullness of the grace of God. You can't. You can't. You fall under that umbrella of, of the graces of God, but you can't enjoy. You can't enjoy all that God has for you. All that God offers you through his grace. And if you don't enjoy the fullness of God's grace, you will be lacking in that faith that will sustain you in the graces of God. God wants to do a work. Wants to do a work. And if you allow him to start that work, his word tells us that he will complete that work. He will complete that work. The Bible clearly tells us before we endeavor to do something, count the cost. God has already counted the cost. God has already paid the cost. It's done. It's done. All we have to do is put ourselves on the potter's wheel and let God complete us. Us. What more can we ask that he hasn't already done? (laughs) 
Psalms 139, 16. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. The enemy does not have the last word in your life. He never has and he never will. God's words speak life in every situation. God's word never come back empty. They always accomplish what he wants. Turn with me to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37, 5 and 6. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And we know and we know and we know that Ezekiel prophesied to those bones. And those bones came to life. God speaks life into the dead. God's word does not come back void to him. They will accomplish what they were sent out to accomplish. How can we neglect such salvation? How can we neglect that? That's life. That is truly life. That is God-given life. Let me tell you this. His best, God's best is better than our best. We can only compare things to our standards. We have no real way of knowing or understanding What God has for us. We have no real way of knowing. Just how much God. Has for us. We can only base it on. Our current circumstances. Our current situations. We can only base it upon. Our neighbors and how they're living. But we got to get out of that. We need to stop trying to justify our existence based on someone else's existence. Based on how the world wants to dictate to you how you ought to live. But God tells us how he wants us to live. And better than that, God says he will empower you to live that way. What has the world promised you? What has the world promised you that you can take to the bank? And if you take it to the bank and if you try to withdraw too much of it, they will add on a penalty. But there's no penalty in the word of God. Come unto God. There is no condemnation. None. He who starts a work in you He will complete it. We should rejoice in the fact that God wants to share what he has with us. Let's go on another journey. Let's go to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 verses 8 through 11. God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, 
so are my ways higher than your way. How in the world can you say that you know what works for you? <laughs> when God says, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. That passage of scripture lets me know that God is the one that is able, that is capable to sustain you. That to give you and to grant you everything that you're in need of. To keep you, to keep you looking his way. God. Wants to start a work in you. And if he starts it. He shall complete it. He shall complete it. They will do the work I sent them to do. They will complete the assignment I gave them. God brought Joseph up. Out of the pit. From prison to the palace. Joseph became the second in command. Was Joseph qualified to be second in command? Probably not. But it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. Because the hand of God was on Joseph. The hand of God orchestrated. Orchestrated that. God's favor would trump everybody's qualifications. God trumps qualifications. Give your life to God. And God will put you someplace. God will place you where you ought to be. Where you need to be. And you know what's good about that, Corey? You don't have to fill out a resume. <laughs> Praise God. Bible clearly teaches me what door God's open, no man will close. What door God closed, no man can open. So God, God trumps this world. God has this world. I ask you, who would not want the favor of God to be upon their life? If you only knew what God has for you. It's kind of like leading the horse to the water. We can tell you about the favor and the goodness of God. We can show you. We can tell you about our experiences in and through that. But we cannot make you drink it. We cannot make you drink it. In essence, what we must do, we must lay aside the way things has always worked and the way things have always been. To allow God the opportunity to do a work in your life. If we want to see the favor of God. And I say that with a caution. We don't do what we do because we expect something from God. We do what we do because we love God. And because of our love for him. That he grants us favor. God is not our vending machine. For every time we need something, we pull the handle. And he gives us. 
But God wants to be a vital part of each and every one of our lives. And in his Bible has shown us, given us many examples. And God has placed men, women, and children in our lives that can show us his favor. We see it. It is my heart's desire not only that you see it, but I want you to experience it. I want you to know what it is to love God and to receive the love that God has for you. I can't, I can't define it. I can't, I can't describe it. There's no words to describe it. You have to own it for yourself. But God wants you to own it for yourself. John 1 and 12 speaks about being born again. Then once you're born again, you become a part of the family of God. Everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to you. When Satan sees us as a child of God, he sees what you're about to become. And what you're about to do. He sees a destiny in the making. That is why. That is why he pulls out all the stops. To come between you and God. It is not about what you're going to do in this present time. But it is about what you're going to do hereafter. The people you will influence. The people that you will bring to God. He doesn't want to see that. He doesn't want to see the family of God to grow. That's why if he stops you, you can't witness to anybody else. You can't tell anybody else about the love of God. You can't show anybody else about the love of God. When you become born again, your battle begins. Your battle begins. But God, but God has made us more than conquerors. Because know about our frailty, he sent his son to win the war, to win the battles. So if we call upon his name, We will have victory. We will have victory. That is part of God completing what he started. So we don't have to fight. When we've done all that we can do, God says stand. Stand. And let the power of the Almighty take control. Praise God. Praise God. That should let us know it's not a physical battle. It's a spiritual battle. And God wins all spiritual battles. Just get away from the physical and receive what God has for us in the spirit. If we want victory. The enemy knows that if you know Jesus, that you begin to understand and know the powerful grace and the favor that Jesus can have on your life. When people look at you, they may not see a finished product. But the good news is, when God looks at you, he sees the best in you. It is time for us to start seeing things God's way. I think you will really enjoy the view when you do. His mercies are new every morning. His mercies endure forever. Great is his faithfulness. I'm going to leave you with this poem. 
I know who holds the future, and I know who holds my hand. With God, things just don't happen. Everything by him is planned. So as I face tomorrow with his problems large and small, I will trust the God of miracles. I will give to him my all. Praise God. Praise God. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. Praise God. Praise God. I just hope that this will become an encouragement to you. Knowing that God wants the absolute best for each and every one of us. Not only does he want it, but he's given us. <laughs> he's given us the plan to achieve it, to attain it, to receive it. There's only one thing keeping us from that completion. That is us. That is us. That is us. So if there's a need this morning, if there's a need this morning, allow God to take care of that need. If there's a need for salvation this morning, allow the shed, of, allow the shed blood of Jesus Christ to cover those past sins, to wash you so that you become new. God wants to start that work. If you don't start it, he can't complete it. But he wants you to start that work by giving yourself to Jesus so he can complete what Jesus has started. Jesus started salvation. But God says <laughs> he wants to complete it until the coming of Jesus. He needs you to start the work. When you start it, he will complete it. If there's a need this morning, come. Let us pray together. Let us seek the throne of grace. Let us seek the sovereign hand of God this morning. Let us seek the grace of God this morning. Let us seek the love of God this morning. Are there, is there anyone out there this morning? I, I think you. Yes, sir. You want to pray? Yes. Come pray. Come pray. Come pray. Come pray. Come pray. Those that know the power of prayer, let's come and pray with uh, John and Donovan this morning. And I will uh, say a closing prayer for the rest of the congregation. Blessed Father, we love you and we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity.